If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Robbie. Guys, yes, of course, I'm too late to the party because of the recent demonetization, the shadow banning, etc, etc, you name it. However, now, finally, we are back and we're going to react to Sam Harris and why so many young men are converting to Islam. I personally was never an atheist. I grew up in a Christian household and this year I reverted to Islam. Alhamdulillah. However, that being said, I followed Sam Harris a little bit and that was mainly due to his eloquence in speech, his rationale, perceived rationale at that time and his talking points in comparison to Christianity. He made some fair points, credit where credit is due. However, after watching him for a few months or so, I came to the conclusion that atheism is of course absolutely irrational and no matter how much rationality rationality you try to infuse into your speech and how much eloquence you try to infuse into your speech, it doesn't change the fact that you try to sell me that something came out of nothing, that there is absolutely no ultimate truth, that there is no objective morality, but somehow I'm supposed to follow certain man-made laws. Yeah, sure. All right, I'm very curious to see what he has to say about Islam. With no further ado, let's have a look. Have you been keeping abreast or have you noticed this trend that's happened of Westerners choosing to convert to Islam in adult life? This girl right you spent here. a lot of your mm. career criticizing Islam and right. now we have, I don't want to accuse it of LARPing. These people very well right. may truly believe in the doctrine, but I mean, Andrew Tate Just is, yeah. is, is yeah. one of them. And, and downstream <laughs> from that, there's on-street interviews with young British youths with mm. these um, Islamic scholars or... or, or Imams or whatever, uh, converting them on the street, imams. and they're, right. they're like yeah. they're doing the doing the thing on the on the street. Yeah. Have you have you? I haven't I haven't seen those vox pop conversions, but um, I saw Andrew Tate. Acting as if it's a magic trick. Um, well, I mean, Islam is just mimetically, it's perfect for a, a specific audience. You know, it's um, it's it's a explicitly macho religion right <laughs> it's a no pussies religion right it's just What's a and it's, it's just you know it's a uh, like w w with christianity you have to pretend All pussies to, yeah well you have to pretend That's to be sure. happy to be losing for the longest time and you're basically just waiting for jesus to come back and rectify <laughs> this gr grave injustice. i actually agree with this the meek shall inherit the earth you're just, you know, it's, there's no putting this place right. We're not going to win until we really, until we see, you know, Jesus arrive on cloud, trailing clouds of glory. Think about the guy what you will, but he is absolutely right here. And that was this defeatist attitude that I personally hated within Christianity as well, because Christianity would remind us over and over again that this here is not heaven and we cannot do anything about it. We are actually commanded to carry the cross and suffer just like Jesus did. That didn't make any sense for me whatsoever. Even if we pre-assume that Jesus truly suffered on the cross and he died for our sins, why would we now have to suffer just like Jesus did? Shouldn't this be our salvation? Shouldn't we now have life, eternal life? But no, this is not the doctrine of Christianity. However, within Islam, yes, this is the dunya. This is not the paradise. We understand this. Nevertheless, we're trying our best, of course. We're giving zakat. We're giving charity. We're doing good deeds. We're doing the five daily prayers. We're working on ourselves, trying to become the best Muslims we can be. This is an attitude of winners, of course. And therefore, he used certain derogatory terms here. This is not a religion for pussies. But yes, I do agree. It is not a religion for losers. <laughs> So it's, it's all going to be f for the longest time, and there's no imperative that we really do anything. Really, like there's no expectation that we are going to win before anything good happens. I mean, That's I true. There, there's there's one. But why does he say we? Sam Harris is not Christian. He is Jewish, and now he's a Jewish atheist. For most Christians, it's just it's it's a story of failure, and then they get to say, "Look, we were right." You know, Jesus. You know, Eat yeah, yeah, yeah. With Islam. 
there's an expectation that they're going to conquer the world, right? And there's an imperative to conquer the world. And for ser for serious Muslims, it's like you, know, you don't have to be impatient necessarily. You can take as long as you want, but this is all we all know. This is moving in one direction, and you need to be a spiritual warrior. And if you if you take this really far, if you become a jihadist, right? You're an especially doctrinaire, militant, you know, true believer. Well, then you're a kind of spiritual James Bond. I mean, then it's like it's like you get to be what? Jocko and care about and know that you're going to go to paradise, right? Like, so you get all the tools. Like, it's 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 the it's the first person shooter that literally you get all the good guns. Like, it's okay, you're the first person shooter that gets all the good guns. But where do you wage jihad? This is of course extremely superficial, and I wouldn't expect anything less, anything other from this atheist over here. But the point of the story is, I revert to Islam now. So why am I not a jihadi? Where will I wage jihad now? Jihad first and foremost means struggle. So therefore, there is an internal jihad, there is an external jihad. There are different ways of struggling, struggling for God, struggling the good struggle so to speak. Even back in the day, in the golden age of Islam, you had the warrior class and then you had people that struggled via the pen, the jihad of the pen or the jihad of the tongue. So during that time in Islamic society, you had different roles, duh, obviously, and therefore not everybody becomes a warrior. This is yet again, this anti-Islam rhetoric. It's not this boring, I'm pretending to just, uh, I'll, I'll turn the other cheek, you know, hit, you know, thank, thank you, sir, can I have another? Um, and... <laughs> You know where the it's it, it's it's a high T religion, right? And that's why a schmuck like Andrew Tate thinks it's he's had an you know a real insight People in embracing seeing. it. So let's dissect this because this is absolutely hilarious. He says Islam is a high T religion, which means it's a high testosterone religion. But what does that even mean? So it is a high testosterone religion. Is high testosterone something negative? Yes, nowadays testosterone is seen as a toxin, of course, toxic masculinity. And Sam Harris, the godless atheist that he is, would rather have some low testosterone levels because this is all so much more virtuous. Absolutely ridiculous. God created us male and female. So therefore, Islam is not only a high T religion, but it's a high estrogen religion, if you will, as well in combination, because Islam is for everyone and of course both genders islam is for males and for females it is not just one-sided of course we have a patriarchy in islam but especially that determines that there are two genders and those two genders have different roles to play within islam <laughs> yet again this is so ridiculous you have to be so weak to see high testosterone as something negative and then he depicts of course andrew tate oh this macho guy of course he falls for islam because he has high testosterone and I have low testosterone, and that's why I'm an atheist. Embracing it. People are seeing it as a redress to women of the West who are, have been conned by feminism into believing that mm -hmm. these things are good for them. They're not good for them. We need, you know, no one's happy. Look at the divorce rates. Look at the 60% of U.S. teenage girls aged 12 to 16 have regular or persistent feelings of hopelessness. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's only fans pathologically fapping themselves into a, a early monster energy hole or whatever it is that they're doing right the answer is a return to something that's got a bit yeah. more lindy nature to it so first of all kudos the guy just described the west in a nutshell but then he says to return to something that has a more lindy nature to it no this is not what it is but of course the atheist mind cannot wrap their head around it this is about returning to God. The reason why the West fell is because they left God. That's what it is. They left God, they left religion, and this is why they are falling. The only solution, hence, is God. Now, you have only so many options. If you go into Buddhism or Hinduism, those religions are rather polytheistic, so therefore I don't even want to talk about them. However, when it comes to the Abrahamic faiths, the monotheistic religions, you have only so many. You have Judaism, which is essentially an ethnocentric religion for the Jews. If you're not Jewish, it's very, very hard to become a Jew. Ethnically, you cannot become a Jew, and religiously, it is almost impossible. And why would you? Then you have Christianity, which claims to be monotheistic however you have the issues of the trinity 
and moreover, you have the issues of secularism, which stemmed from Christian countries. So Christianity already failed because the people that called themselves Christians did not adhere to the church any longer. What does that mean? That God's law is not perfect. They already abandoned the church and created secularism. So then you have Islam. Aside from Islam being the superior social political system, theologically speaking, Islam is the only purely monotheistic religion. Actually, it's very, very funny because some Christians, they will claim that Islam is extreme Unitarianism. So this is how they call it nowadays. Pure monotheism is called extreme Unitarianism because people forgot what it means to worship one God alone. Islam is the only solution for that. And people that truly analyze the systems in place, such as liberalism, the modernity, they will, of course, understand that only God can save them from that degeneracy, nothing else. And I'm very, very curious now to hear the response of atheist Sam Harris. Well, I mean, that that's the claim, the claim. that I want to deny. Of course, I mean, it, you it, have it's, to. It's explicitly retrograde. I mean, it is regressive. It is backward looking. It is not, uh, it is not using all of the good ideas we've, we've had in the meantime, right? It's like, it's a disavowal of the present and the near present, I mean, the modernity, in, in the case of Islam, it's a, dis it's a disavowal of nearly 1,400 years of, of wisdom and insight. Yes, you're absolutely right. Islam stands against modernity and stands against progressivism. We do not think that your man-made ideas are better than the divine law. This is the whole premise here. Islam did not start with Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, but we believe that Islam was there with the very first men. Adam. We believe, yes, that Adam was the first man, he was the first prophet, and the message was crystal clear from the get-go. Why is that so? Because God, Allah, is never changing. That's it. Allah is never changing, his pattern is never changing, his law is never changing. That is God. God is transcendent of time. All of those little movements that are popping up throughout time do not give us any moral guidance. And how could they? Look at your political stance. Look at what you just said. You said yourself that we progressed in the last 1,400 years. You, of course, clearly believe that we as humans come up with better and better and better solutions. But if you look around, just like your buddy described there, we don't have the solutions in place apparently, right? People are falling into monster energy traps, pornography, degeneracy, etc., etc., you name it. So how do we fix those things? By progressing even further. But how do we progress? By introducing certain into kindergartens. That will fix it. It is such a beautiful display of intellectual idiocracy. As an atheist, you have no moral grounding. You believe that the further you progress, the better society gets, even though the reality is quite different. If we look around, we see a decline of moral virtues. So how can that be? I thought we are evolving. Apparently not. Yet again, Islam stands in exact opposite to that. And of course, as an atheist, you absolutely hate this. You cannot humble yourself and say, yeah, well, maybe there is a God that is more intelligent than us little humans. Maybe he knows something that we do not know. Maybe there is an eternal law that we can follow. And even if you would look at Islam only from a utilitarian worldview, you would see that Islam provides exactly the social and the spiritual mechanisms that we need as human beings to flourish and to be happy. It's, it's, a, it's a claim that in the seventh century, Somebody was so smart and so wise and so prescient and so had, so had his together nope. that everything worth thinking about and talking about happened then, right? So we should confine ourselves to the products of that conversation. No, yet again, absolutely false. You're talking about someone in the seventh century attributing Islam to Prophet Muhammad. That's of course not what we believe. We believe that this is a divine law coming from God, transcendent of time. It does not matter where the Quran was revealed. We believe that monotheism was revealed from the very first day out on. Try to see the bigger picture and forget your biases about religion. When we are talking about religion, we are talking
talking about a relationship with God. We're talking about a relationship that is transcendent of time and context, of course. There must be a way, a spiritual connection to God that has absolutely nothing to do with the current time frame you are in. This connection to God must be truthful. We claim that this truthful connection is a total submission to God. Submitting to God by prayer, submitting to God, of course, by following the divine laws. We believe in an absolute moral standard. We believe that all of morality, the word that you're using as well, stems from God, from a source. We, of course, believe that everything stems from that source. You believe that something came out of nothing. That is absolutely ridiculous. We believe that there is a creative force behind everything and, of course, we do believe that this creative force determines what is right and what is wrong. Even you, in your worldview, you have certain things that you see as right and wrong, based upon what, however. You do not have a moral grounding for your argument other than utilitarianism. It is good for society. Again, the atheists cannot wrap their head around this. They're offering you man-made solutions that are changing every few years. If you look a couple of years back, you will see the doctors recommended cigarettes. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you follow those things? Ultimately, it leads to despair because you already know that those scientific findings will be dismantled in a few years' time. As believers, we believe that our law is eternal and therefore we want to follow it eternally. That's it imbecilic on its face, right? And it's not wow. to say, again, it's not to say there's nothing useful to come out of Islam, but whatever is useful, we can use without believing that Muhammad was visited by the Archangel Gabriel and got, and, you know, got the last, you know, download from the creator of the universe. Um, <coughs> so whatever is useful, we can believe. Why would we believe that? And how would we determine that it is useful? Anything that you say is based upon nothing. It is just your opinion. Maybe it is useful. Maybe it is not. If we don't have a moral source, a grounding, an objective morality for the claim made by a certain person, how would we believe it? Unreal. This is not to deny any of the cultural problems that someone like Andrew Tate or I mean, there's lots of people we've we've dragged into the conversation here, but like all of these people who I've criticized to some degree, Tate or RFK or or um, I mean, you could add Elon to this. I mean, all these people are <laughs> kind of living out the consequences of their dissatisfaction with the present on the public stage and winning a lot of followers as a result. So this is an amazing projection on his part. Of course, all of those people are dissatisfied with the present. At the same time, he is, of course, attacking Islam, Christianity, God, but he is absolutely satisfied with the presence as if he has no biases whatsoever. Moreover, he is the moral standard. He is the atheist. Everything that he says is objectively true, even though there is no objectivity. We are living in a relative universe after all, right? We come from nothing the Big Bang, and then you have random evolution from there out on. We're all randomly evolved. Our brains are randomly evolved. Nothing we say is coherent after all. It is based upon randomness. Even my thoughts are just random. But hey, listen to me. I'm Sam Harris. I'm the atheist. I'm objectively right. It's called playing God, Sam. I like the way these guys are complaining about the obvious excesses of the left for the most part. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video, long enough as it is. In the end, it is up to you, of course, who you want to follow. Do you want to follow the atheists that will tell you there is no objective morality, there is no right and wrong, but Islam is wrong. Obviously, progress into our liberal modernity is right. But there is no right and wrong after all. But believe me, I am just an evolved monkey floating in space on a planet turning around itself. I have no real clear coherent thought because there is no such thing. My brain just evolved randomly, just like my surrounding. Everything you see is random. There is no absolute truth. But yet again, listen to me because what I say here is absolutely true. And of course, Andrew Tate is wrong and Trump is wrong. And I 
am right. But there is no right and wrong. That is the endless spiral, just spiraling further down into obscurity. What else would you expect from the atheist mind? All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. Please check them out. All right, this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Thank you.